This engineering project conserves energy by saving water. Your city wants to help conserve energy by using a water collection system. The city will collect the runoff water in a large tank. The water is not drinkable but can be used to wash cars and bikes or for community gardens. To pay for the project, the city will collect a dime for every gallon of water used. People will use different sized bottles and buckets to get the water, so they need a way to measure how much water comes out of the tank. As the city engineer, your job is to solve problems. You are confident you can find the best solution by using an engineering process called design thinking. The design thinking process has seven steps. Understand the problem, explore solutions to the problem, further define solutions for the problem, think of creative ways to solve the problem, test your solutions, refine the solution, and then decide on a final solution. In the first step, we meet the project leader to learn how the water collection system will be used. We also learn that how to measure one gallon of water is a problem. From that, we determine some design considerations. They are low cost, reliability, and a simple design. In the second step of our process, we explore different possibilities. In the third step of our process, we do some research to determine which possibilities will be the best solution. From our research, we determine two possible solutions. We do some additional research to get more information about the two possible solutions. The next step is to think about our possibilities and see if we can come up with a creative solution. We decide the least expensive solution is to use springs similar to those used in the scale. The weight of a gallon of water will compress the springs and push a button to shut off the water. Our next step is to test the design by using a prototype. We'll build our own springs for testing. Engineers create prototype models to test designs under working conditions. Prototyping will help estimate the size of the spring needed. We'll create four springs and observe their performance supporting one gallon of water. We'll use three basic principles of spring design. The heavier the wire, the stronger the spring. The smaller the coil, the stronger the spring. The more active coils, the less load you will have to apply in order to get the spring to move a certain distance. We'll be using a common spring material, music wire with a .025 inch diameter. Using pliers, wrap the wire around a wooden dowel or other cylindrical object. The wire will expand slightly larger than the dowel when released, so use a dowel that is smaller than the desired coil size. Remove the dowel and using pliers, bend the ends of the spring into a square-like shape. This will help fasten the spring to a surface. The next step is to test our prototype. To do this, we'll tape the springs to a board into the desktop and we'll place a full gallon of water on top of the board. It's important that springs do not compress completely under load. You'll be asked why you think this is important on the project assessment. Did the springs perform as expected? If not, experiment with changing the spring characteristics, like the coil size and number of coils. By using the prototyping process, we have been able to estimate the design characteristics of the spring and test the design. If our tests were successful, we have a solution for measuring a gallon of water for our water collection system. Fortunately, we know of a world-class spring manufacturer, Wolverine Coil Spring Company. Wolverine reduces the cost of mass-producing springs by designing and building machines to form the springs. A single machine performs a number of operations to create a spring. On a piece of paper, list the operations the machine would need to perform to create a spring and the order of the operations. Submit the list to your instructor. In the third part of this lesson, we'll look at understanding the math and science behind our design. Understanding the math and science of a design helps engineers predict how designs perform under varying conditions. Springs obey Hooke's law, and therefore a spring design will have a predictable and repeatable reaction to forces applied to the spring. Hooke's law states that the force with which a spring pushes back is linearly proportional to the distance from its equilibrium length. We need to find the value of our spring's constant for the spring we designed. Using the values from our prototype model, we can now solve for k. In this example, we'll use 1.25 as the distance the spring compressed. Our calculations show that k equals 1.67 pounds per inch. In other words, for every 1.67 pounds, the spring will compress one inch. Using your spring's constant value, determine if your spring will support two gallons of water.